Welcome to DNA Creations. Uh, this is the uh, first leather tutorial in our line. Um, today we're going to make a flask holder out of leather. Um, so there, let's get going. So here I'm uh, setting up the leather. It's about, uh, I think it's a six to eight ounce. Um, cutting it down to size. I just measured the height of the, um, the flask and then uh, do a wrap around it to get the general width or length of it. Cut it a little bit long. Yeah, that's Nandor. He's, uh, he can be a little uh, pesky sometimes. He likes to st steal the spotlight. So, uh, so here I'm just fitting it up, um, marking it to get a more exact size, uh, cut it down to size. Some of this will be, most of this will be in a fast forward to uh, uh, speed things up a little bit. So I'm just checking, making sure that the, uh, the, the leather fits. Now I'm cutting the, the, uh, the strap portion. I like to go a little wide on these. It's about two inches. Uh, wide allows me to do some tooling on it and it also uh, if you're hanging it on your belt it'll keep it from um, flopping around a little bit with a little bit wider handle so I'm just test fitting it right here for length I'm going to mark the center point of the uh, strap to lay out my location for the rivets and I'm also marking the center location of the main flask holder portion. It's important to line these up uh, for lining up the rest of the rivet holes in the back later. Lessons learned when uh, creating one of these videos: try to uh, set your camera up and your your item so that it's more in the center of the screen. So I think I made the uh, correction right here. Um, now I'm rounding off the corners, just using a sharp knife. Careful not to cut yourself. Checking the corners. With the uh, the template the round template making sure they're even making an adjustment now I use a stitch groover to give me a portion to lay out my Order. Uh, this gives me a nice straight line, and I can set the the width however I like. And you'll you'll see later when I add the pattern to the edges. But it's important to do that now while you still have a straight edge to work with. Marking my three rivet locations. And I use my hole punch. Oh, centered in the screen. Hey, move it over. They can't see you. There you go. You're learning. 
Now I line it up. Create a center point so you know exactly where that center rivet goes. Let me use a pencil to mark that center location. Then I'm going to use the hole punch and I'm going to punch the center one only. And then I'll use one of my temporary rivets to uh, hold it in place so I can get an exact location of where to punch the other two. Line that up, then I'll remark the holes. Nope, nope, I'm just going to go straight to punching. Daredevil. Get that second rivet in there, now it's locked in, and I can punch the third hole. And I'm holding it off screen so you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm I'm just temporary fit temporarily fitting the uh, the strap onto the flask. Here I drew a line to where the bend is going to be. I'm going to use a groover, set it to where it's just deep enough to create a little relief for your bend. You don't want to go too deep there and make it a weak location. Now I'm going to pre-fit everything again, put the flask in, and I'm going to mark the rivets that hold the back on. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. Um, I'm just kind of winging it here. Um, I've made probably a few dozen of these flasks some round ones, some square ones, and uh, I pretty much don't have a pattern. I could, although I could make one if anybody was interested. Uh, marking the location for the six rivets on the back. Going to punch the first portion of it. And I'm going to line things up again to mark the locations of the second part of those rivet holes. A lot of repetition, but, you know, without a, a real pattern per se, it's kind of the way you do it. You don't want to punch holes in the wrong spot. Once you have everything how you like it, then you transfer the holes to the other part of the leather, punch those, line it up again. Transfer the holes again to the flask holder. Now I can remove my temporary rivets and move those out of the way. Punch these six holes here. So Nandor wants to show his face again. He really likes that screen time. So here's a pattern that I just traced, and I'm going to transfer it to the flask using the burnisher. You don't want to use a nice even pressure, not too hard. You don't want to rip your pattern and uh, gouge the leather. It's just enough to put the impression I traced around the whole thing. There might be an easier way to do this. If, uh, I'm always welcome for uh, for comments, and you know, I'm always willing to learn new techniques. So, if you know an easier way to do this, 
just let me know. So that's how what it looks like transferred. Next I'm going to wet the leather with a damp spray on both sides. I find if you do, you do both sides it helps set the stamp better. Use a swivel knife. Run a groove down each side of the, uh, the border. This uh, allows you to have a nice stopping point for the stamp pattern. And then now I'm going to use the same swivel knife, trace out the pattern. This is an important step. You get a nice crisp edge with your tooling. Again, you don't want to go too deep with this. Just a nice even pressure. So now it's time to hammer out the uh, the shamrock. I'm using a beveler. There is no real good place to point the camera uh, when you got a big mallet, and so hopefully you can see. Uh, just take your time. I'm going to go around the whole shamrock with the beveler. This beveler has a little bit of a, a rough pattern to it. Then we use the same beveler to go along the edges. This is a smooth baffler, so put the grooves in where the leaves have their their uh, their lines. Just add a little texture, a little character. You might have to wet it down every now and then just uh, so that stamp sets nice. So this is the background pattern, just kind of a random I like to move the tool around a little bit so you're not getting the same pattern over and over. Uh, just turn it in your hand slightly. This adds a nice textured edge, separates the, the design, really makes it stick out.
here I'm just marking the location. I have a little little stamp design that I use. It's kind of my maker's mark. I use a uh, ox foot and a uh, and a I can't remember the name of that other one. I'm using the swivel knife again to uh, offset the edge using that patterned beveler. Here I'm just showing the edge pattern. Um, now I'm using a edge groover. I believe that's what that's called. The size I, I believe it was a zero. And back to beveling. Kind of a little, little back and forth, as you notice, I switched hammers. That uh, that mallet was getting a little heavy. Uh, this hammer does just as good. You do want to use a uh, synthetic hammer, though. You don't want to use a metal one that will uh, really pretty much destroy your your stamping tools over time. Here's the background tool. Again, spin it every once in a while to uh, make the pattern more random. If the leather gets too dry, just do a quick spray or sponge on a light, little bit of water. Uh, if it gets too dry, it uh, the impressions don't set as nice. Again, using the groove, the edge tool, number zero. I'm uh, beveling the edges. End of part one. Intermission. End of intermission. Part two. So I like to use the EcoFlow water stain. This is green, although it looks black in the in the picture. Um, I diluted this part with water, probably 60-40 um, of water to, to stain. I wanted the center part of this leaf to be a little bit lighter and the it will dry a lot lighter than it looks. I like to use the water based when I want to blend and create a, a more realistic looking leaf or anything like that.
you can be a little sloppy here once you go with the darker outline it'll it'll blend in a little bit better sometimes I'll just grab a little bit extra water pat it down on the paper towel to uh, and then I'll, I can use it and kind of blend the blend the edge of the dye so it kind of fades into the leather now I'm using the straight dark green straight green going around the edge and then as the the dye comes off of your brush I'll you I'll blend it in with the lighter green Again, these will dry much lighter than what you see on camera. This is probably my favorite part, <laughs> uh, you know, is the uh, the dyeing, especially when it's something creative like this and not just a straight color. Uh, I like to paint and do other creative things on the side and this kind of ties uh, that together. Again, this is just straight green dye around the edge. Before you dye anything, I uh, use this, uh, you know, a scrap of the same piece of leather you're working on to test out your dyes and let them sit for a while to see how they're going to turn out. You don't want to be, you don't want your your final product to be your test test subject. So here I'm taking off as much of the paint as I can off the paper towel and I'm just slightly blending the, the edges in with a lighter green in the middle. This is the part of the project where you can just let your creative juices flow. You know, you can choose any colors you like, any pattern you like. This uh, this basic square flask can be used with any pattern. I've done steampunk, uh, Viking, Renaissance, um, Celtic knots. So many different things you can do in here. Here I'm adding another layer of the dark green, straight wall straight green, to give that edge a nice dark fade. You can already see the the uh, the color starting to lighten up on the uh, other two leaves.
I'm really liking how this this is turning out. I've never done a, a, a shamrock in a natural color like this. I've usually done them just a straight green. So I was uh, happy when I was requested to uh, make it look more natural. I've done other leaves in the past and I've done fall colors, oak leaves, stuff like that, uh, maple leaves, and uh, the fall colors really look nice. Um, those colors probably wouldn't work so well with uh, a shamrock. Nandor must have got tired. I think he went and laid down. He quit bothering me at this point. So now the shamrock is done, I'm going to do the background, which I like to use the uh, pro dye. This is golden brown. I'll start with a smaller brush to get up close to the pattern. If you happen to splatter a little bit of this dye onto your your uh, your other part, you can quickly wipe it off with your finger. I believe these are alcohol-based st stains for the background. It'll look uneven when I with the first coat. I'll go over it again to smooth it out. I must have just splattered some on there. Quickly wipe it off and it comes out. You probably want to use some sort of nitrile gloves at this point. The stuff, once it gets on your skin, it's on there for a little while. probably asking why did you switch to a bigger brush at this point? Ah, oh, because I was lazy. Plus if it's gonna have a, a pattern with the dye underneath the final coat, I want to kind of make it look like I meant to do it. Here's where I switch to a dauber. Get a nice thick even coat on the wider parts. Then I'll go back over the part that I did up close to the shamrock.
I'll use the same technique for the strap. Use a smaller brush to get up close to the edge. Like I said earlier, this is my very first leather tutorial. Uh, I appreciate some comments and tell me what you think of, uh, of my technique. What If you see something I can improve on, I'm welcome to, for any comments. Um, and in the future I will be doing some other leather tutorials. Um, we also, in our, on our channel, we also do some jewelry making, some steampunk jewelry. Um, Looking forward to sharing some of those with you. So I like to make stuff that I can use myself um, for the Renaissance Festival. It's uh, it's it's gratifying to create something, wear it, and then have somebody see it and compliment you on it and to let them know that you made it. That's kind of how I started this side business. I was making some uh, some leather things for myself uh, and uh, people started asking me you know where I got it. I told them that I made it made it myself and they started asking if I could make them stuff and uh, you know, just kind of led, one thing led to another, and, uh, you know, I've made quite a few things. So the edge here, I'm using the show brown. It's quite a bit darker, well... It'll dry darker. Everything, like I said, will will look lighter. The, the the other brown will be a little bit lighter, and I like to use a dark color on the edge. It really uh, really makes it stand out. You got to be careful with uh, if you get some the darker dyes on on your fingers. You don't want to accidentally touch the uh, the lighter area so you gotta be really careful with that it's not a real easy way to to remove that dark stain from the lighter areas When I'm doing the edge dyeing like this, I like to start with the strap uh, just to see how the the dye reacts with the leather, how it flows, and uh, this piece is a lot easier to reproduce if uh, if something goes wrong. So I want to make sure I have my technique and uh, the flow um, just right before I move on to the the main piece. real careful not to get any of this darker stain on the lighter areas.
See how that dark stain really makes the, the image in the middle pop. Sometimes I'll even use black. I like to dye the inside of the flask holder um, just to, to protect it a little bit and uh, you know you can kind of see it even though it's all riveted and it's pretty close. Um, sometimes if you look at it just the right angle you can see that and uh, just really dresses it up. Here I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to pronounce this gum Traga can't I don't even I, Traga can't I I don't know it's 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 used to help slick the edges I'll use my Dremel you could also use a manual handheld uh, edge slicker but uh, that that gum uh, I don't know like I said I don't know how to pronounce it uh, that really helps give you a nice smooth edge you want to make sure you do this after you die. Uh, all, all your dyeing is done. This, uh, as I, I learned early on, if you try to slick the edges before you dye, um, the dye does not like to stick where you use that gum teragoneth, neth, terag, tag, that gum stuff. So uh, here I'm slicking up the edges, really dresses it up, looks nice and smooth. I'm just applying it with my finger, it's non-toxic. Um, works wonders though on this edge of the leather. You could also use beeswax, um, that's pretty popular. Uh, for some reason I just like this, this liquid stuff works really well. So I add all the rivets into the main piece after uh, the dye has dried a little bit. I'm Again, this is, I apologize for the camera position here. Um, I'm setting the rivets to the, uh, the strap. There's three of them. Rookie mistake, first video. I should have uh, checked the angle and power just went out. It just flashed off and on. kind of took me by surprise. Um, like I was saying, I had a uh, piece of cardboard underneath there and I put a little pen mark to show where my uh, camera view was and, uh, you know, rookie mistake, I'll learn. Uh, the uh, little mini anvil wasn't working for the, uh, the center portion of those rivets, so I had to, um, I think I end up getting a little piece of block of wood, smooth piece of wood that fit in there uh, to set the rivets. I really wish this, uh, the subject would have been in view here, but um, it's pretty straightforward. It's just setting rivets, uh, as you can see there, and I can see some of them. It takes quite a bit of force to set them.
test fitting the flask turns out nice. Next I will be applying a satin machine. This will help uh, protect the leather from water. It, it won't make it waterproof. It'll just uh, help repel the water a little bit. I just apply it liberally and it'll dry. If, you'd enjoy, if you've enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a, a subscribe and thumbs up, like. Let me know in the comments um, if there's any other projects you'd like to see done. This has been uh, a nice, fun learning experience. Like I said, just apply this liberally. I'll, uh, I'll go back and I'll wipe off some excess with a, a dry, dry brush. I'll coat the inside as well. And here's the finished project. Again, thanks for watching and hope to have you join us next time when we work on our next project. Don't forget to like and subscribe.